Well, Charlie, welcome to Meadow Lane. We're absolutely delighted to have you here. Just tell us a little bit about where you are as a player right now, because obviously if you look at your last couple of seasons at Crewe, you probably haven't played as much as you would have wanted to. There have been injuries in there, haven't there? Just tell us where you are right now. Right now I'm just yeah grateful for this opportunity. Um, that will definitely be repaid and I'll show that, but just... Yeah, football's football sometimes, just lack of momentum at the moment. Um, yeah, a couple injuries in there and just bad timing, really, um, which is fine because I'm yeah, happy to be here for, with a fresh start, which is the main thing. We're at the end of January now, but was it always your hope and, and your intention to, to get a loan move? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, all you want to do is play football at the end of the day. I was in a really good environment, you know, really good people, um, great bunch of lads, but ideally I want to be playing and working towards what I want to work towards. So I'm just, yeah, really delighted to be here. We'll talk a little bit about the challenge that you've got ahead of you at, at Knotts in a minute, but I want to touch on your career as a whole, really, because it's been such a fascinating one. Obviously, you were the captain of a very successful Chelsea youth side. You've gone on to experience football at top level in Sweden, top level in the Netherlands, League One. You've got lots of experience at very good levels. Yeah. Overall, as a career, you must have some really happy memories, perhaps some more difficult memories. How much has that experience sort of shaped you into who you are today, would you say? Yeah, all of it really. The, the experiences are great. Um, stepped outside of like my comfort zone a lot. And until you get to maybe times like this, you don't realise how you know, good them experiences have been and how much they help. But it's more just, I feel like I'm just getting started really. Um, it has been stop start and there's loads of ups and downs and yeah, plenty of great memories and yeah, not feeling sorry for myself. but quite a lot of uh, unlucky situations, but I'm just yeah, happy for a fresh start and feel like I'm just getting started and want to stamp my mark down again and let everyone know sort of, you know, Charlie Cockett's back sort of thing. Really interesting when you look <coughs> a bit deeper into a couple of the clubs that you played for previously, Ostersund in Sweden and Swindon Town, you actually worked with our two previous managers, <laughs> Ian Birchnell in Sweden and, and Luke Williams at Swindon. And the reason that I think it's important to reference that is because the model that the club has here, the head coach model, means that it's very rarely there's a huge change in approach when a, a head coach moves on, Stuart Maynard obviously coming into the club recently. Does that give you confidence, having enjoyed working with both of those coaches in the past, that this is a good place for you? Yeah, 100%. That is, you've hit a nail on the head there. When you've worked with two people that um, a part of like a previous model who you yeah love to be honest so um, yeah just it, it works re works out really well doesn't it and just really looking forward to it. Tell us about that experience of playing out there in, in Sweden we enjoyed hearing from Ian some of his stories out there in terms of the passion and, and the approach to the game out there but you spent a lot of time there uh, didn't you I think it was over three seasons you played yeah. lots of football out there you must have loved it. Yeah that was the main objective and I did absolutely love it um, Obviously, there was a time when COVID hit and things become a bit difficult, but that was the same for everyone, really. But yeah, some really good memories, um, like you said, some really good experiences and just, yeah, a different way of learning. And it was nice to experience something different. Yeah. you got some nice memories with people that you're going to be starting to work with here at Knotts, haven't you? Jody Jones, I believe Dan Crowley as well. You, you know pretty well. Can you just explain how you know them and, and what you know about them? Yeah, just known Jody Jones for years now and Dan Crowley. Um, well, obviously me and Jody are both from East London, um, got similar, got a few different like friendship circles and they sort of meet somewhere in the middle and yeah, Jody's just top boy. Obviously he's, he's, you know, from East London and achieving what he's achieving with what he's been through. Like he's a role model to a lot of people. So he's, he's top man. Yeah, when you see him racking up the assists and equaling a League Two record in January, you must yeah. be pretty proud of that. Yeah, of course, I'm proud and not surprised really, which is the nice thing about it. Once he's got the momentum he needed and, you know, it's all some people need sometimes is an opportunity and a bit of momentum and he's obviously full of confidence and he deserves all the applause at the minute and he needs to keep it up. He does. Dan Crowley's having a fantastic season for us as well. How do you know him? Um, known Dan just from obviously our academy days, uh, playing against each other and we used to play for England together at younger ages, which is you know, sometimes you forget, but they're like proud moments as well when you're younger. And and done someone I've spoke to a lot um, on different occasions because we've been in similar boats, really, like sort of here, there, and everywhere. And sometimes he's found it hard to get settled somewhere. But again, it's just that thing of once you do find somewhere where you're loved and appreciated, and you know, look what you can achieve, sort of thing. Because again, he's been great and needs to keep his form up. He's he's excellent. 
Yeah, you've rolled on to my next question perfectly there. You've got <coughs> somebody like Dan Crowley, someone like John Bostock as well. Similar to you in the sense that they had very high profile youth careers and have had excellent careers from there, but potentially have struggled to find a, a home. But both of them are absolutely flourishing at Meadow Lane. And is that sort of what's in the back of your mind here with this move, almost trying to find somewhere where you can really sort of set your stall out and, and bed in? Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, come across Bostock previously at a different club as well, and he's yeah an incredible person. And yeah, like you say, similar profile, similar stories. And when you see what they're sort of achieving now, and you just know that it's it's doable, sort of thing. Yeah, you just want to set your stall out and get amongst it and really help the lads and help the club go in the direction they want to go in. When you look at, I suppose, the overall philosophy of the club, as we've touched on before, the style of play. Um, but then you combine the fact that we're right in the hunt uh, in the top seven of, of League Two with a really exciting few months ahead. Is that all one sort of big cauldron of excitement for you to get stuck into? Yeah, without a doubt, it's what you what you want to do. You know, play some football, um, win games, and that's all that matters. And you help this club uh, achieve something great again because yeah, they've got an incredible chance of doing that. And you just got to make sure you're up and around it and pushing towards the top. Averaging well over 11,000 at Meadow Lane as well. Does that play into the yeah, mind of a player? Yeah, it's unreal. It's unreal. They're, they're incredible numbers, to be honest. And uh, yeah, just can't wait to hear that behind you. Yeah, it'd be great. The away end will be packed out at Mansfield on Saturday. Clearly, you're going to need to take some time to, to bed in. You haven't trained with the, with the lads yet. But how eager are you to get on the training pitch, first and foremost, and, and show what you can do? Yeah, yeah, can't wait. <laughs> like, I wish it was today's sort of vibes, just... Yeah, just love playing football. Just, I'm sure you'll you'll pick that up and see in no time the quality and just absolutely love being out there and just want to be a part of something special and uh, yeah, get get the job done sort of thing. How would you define your own strengths? What would you? What really sort um, of gets you going on the pitch? I think I'm just I'm brave. I just want to get on the ball. I want to make things happen. Um, sort of lead by example in that sense. Very creative. Um, Got a decent left foot that I'm sure will be on display and yeah, just want to be amongst it, making things happen. We're talking on Wednesday afternoon, you lose track of time when deadline day is approaching. Talking Wednesday afternoon, so it's a day off tomorrow for the lads and then you'll be in training on Friday. What will you be doing over the next couple of days before that, that first day and to prepare for it? Yeah, I think it's just doing what I've been doing really. I've been you know fit for a long time um, and just trying to contain the excitement but just just get used to it all, you know, get used to just going to have to drive in, which is a bit different um, for now and just, yeah, do what I've been doing really. And that excitement, you can sort of sense it behind, <laughs> behind those can eyes you? of yours. <laughs> yeah, you can really see that there's a hunger, um, a hunger to do something here uh, in the, over the next three or four months. Yeah, that's the word. I think hunger is like, yeah, just making up for a bit of lost time and just, you know, football moves quickly and I'm here to, you know, really make a name for myself but more importantly really feel like I'm just getting started and really help the club in the direction they want to go in because that's that's the main goal.